What's happening everyone, it's Wilson and I'm making another quick video on the top ways to improve your stock trading results. So I've made a lot of mistakes uh, trading stocks and a lot of times it's emotional mistakes or not having good risk management and every single day I'm still learning something new. Uh, in this video I kind of want to share some tips that I've accumulated over all my mistakes and I'm trying to um, not make these same mistakes again. And improve my trading game to get better results every single day. Uh, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter at is Wilson8. So number one, have a trading journal. I know some of the best traders, the best stock traders of, of anything, forex traders, whatever, they always have a journal. Even like business people, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and uh, people in that's running their own business always have their own journals, right? They write down their goals, they write down everything that's going on every day and how they can improve it. Uh, you don't need to pay for anything. You don't need to pay for fancy apps. You don't need to spend a lot of money. Just use uh, Excel or Google Spreadsheet is always free or just some sort of like goal tracking app and keep track of every single trade. So um, write down exactly when you got in, when you exit, um, what was the position size that you took, uh, and then have a note section. That's the most important part of a journal. It's like taking down your daily notes. What did you do wrong? What what did you do good today? What, what was the positive thing? And remember, always have positives. The, even if it's a red day, there's something that you did in the day that was positive. So take that and reward yourself. Small wins go a long way. Write down everything that was positive and make sure you write down a lot of things that were negative, even if it's a green day. Write down all those negatives and, and think about how you can make uh, future improvements. Write that down too. You know, what am I going to do better tomorrow? What mistakes am I never going to make again? And make sure you hold yourself accountable for that. So have a good trading journal. Log on your results. Number two, risk management. As I said, one of the biggest mistakes I made when I started trading was not having good risk management. And until today, it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard, especially when a stock is falling and then, or, or it started off as profitable and then it started to drop lower than, than where you wanted it. So, you know, you just got to take that loss sometime. And uh, having, having a good risk management strategy, you know that going into a trade, every, every time you make that trade, um, you want to look for something like uh, that you will, you will gain at least two for one. So every time you take a position, have that strategy in mind and know exactly when you're going to exit. Uh, because if you're making 10 trades a day and seven, seven of them are profitable, then you're going to be a profitable trader. But if you don't have that risk management, everything's just going to go off the board. You know, you're going to have a stock where you're losing thousands of dollars and, and then you're only gaining these small wins. And that's not going to get you anywhere because you're not managing your risk. The best traders manage the risk and they have a strategy that they stick with when it comes to risk management. Is they have a strategy that when it comes to risk management, just like business management, is you, you can in the long term after spending all your cost. They have a strategy that they stick with knowing a good way on how you can profit consistently long term after spending all your costs, right? So for example, if you're starting like a restaurant, you have to understand that there, there will be down days. You know, there will be days where people aren't going to come and eat at your restaurant and you will have inventory costs. You will have payroll costs. You will have marketing costs. So you know that on the up days, uh, you might be making more, but then there's always going to be down days. So you have to know how to manage all of those things together and have the good ma money management and risk management. That's why I always think po people that play poker and people who trade stocks is very similar. You know, you're not going to have green days every single day. And I have never met a good trader that never had the red days. But I've never met a good trader that doesn't have a good risk management strategy as well. So always make sure why you're getting into a trade as well before you do it. Not just because you heard somewhere that this stock will blow up tomorrow. You know, so have your risk and make sure the odds are always in your favor. Number three, learn to ride the trends. Uh, never trade against the trends. That's one mistake I always did wrong. You know, oh, this is a hot sector. Like for example, the AI bloom was last week. It was very hot. All the stocks in the AI was 
was super hot. You know, I mean, they had its dips, it, it goes up and down, but at the end of the day, you know, it's still a hot sector. So even at a dip, it'll come right back up, and that's probably not a day where you want to short the stock. So learn what the trends are, you know, read the news, read what's happening, and learn to ride with the trend, you know, especially if it's trending upwards, why, why you want to sell, right? So, um, a good trend will always push your stock upwards and learn to ride the trend. Number four, review charts on weekends and after hours. Just because the market is closed, it doesn't mean you don't have to do your homework, right? Just like when you go to school, you go to school for eight hours a day, it doesn't mean you don't have your homework and study time afterwards. Same exact thing with stock market. If you want to get good, if you want to profit consistently and you want to trade better with better results, you know, on your downtime, review the charts. You know, you don't always have to just look at stocks that are hot. Look at the other stocks in similar sectors. Look at the trading patterns. Look at uh, look at the trends. Look at the charts. Um, try to identify what would be a good entry point. What would be a good exit point? Where's the dip to buy into? What is the trend going? Is it going upwards or is this uh, whole entire sector is going downwards? Look at other charts, study them, you know, study past charts. Don't just look like, you know, three or five days back, which a lot of traders do, especially momentum and day traders. Look further back, look at 180 days, look at one year, look at two years, look for something that happened before, like a big spike that happened before. How long did that spike hold in, in the past? You know, this is everything you need to consider before taking a position. If the chart or if the stock has no history, then, then, be very cautious when you're trading it, you know. Uh, other things you can do on the weekends is that you can look into the news of every single company, you know, study the fundamentals. Is this a company you would invest in? Remember, stock trading, you have to think of it like a business. Would you invest into this company? And if you will, after looking at all the trends, all the news, all the fundamentals, and you think it's a solid company along with a trending sector, then maybe, okay, now I'll take a position. And then you will set your risk management strategies. But if you're not looking at charts and you're just jumping into trades, chances are you're, you're not going to have a fun day, you know. But um, these are some of the things you can do on the weekend. Just because the market is closed doesn't mean you have no work to do. Always be learning, you know. So that brings me to, to point number five. Always be learning. I'm an entrepreneur and in business, we're always learning every single day. Every mistake we make, every failure we make, we take it. And we learn from it. We make sure we don't make the same mistake again. You know, don't fool a man twice is what they used to say. So there are tons of content out there for stock trading market. There's a bunch of YouTube videos. There's a bunch of lessons out there that are free. There's a ton of blogs, a ton of books. Go study them. And especially you can do this anytime. You can do this while you're eating. If you're if you're taking a lunch break, you can do this on the weekend. Uh, when you're bored, you know, or maybe when you're when you're out, you know, you can listen to a podcast or you can watch a video of somebody analyzing your trade. When you're watching videos of people that explains their trade, you know, think to yourself and ask yourself, why did they get into the trade? Why this specific entry point? Why was this uh, the entry point that they got into? Maybe it was because it was a dip or maybe because they noticed it was a downward trend. Study it. Study the past and and. and and ask yourself, you know, like, why did they exit at this point? Why did they sell so early? Or why did they sell so late? You know, read more books. Always be learning. Just keep consuming and try to set a goal for yourself to learn something new every single day or at least something new every single week. This will bring you on and improve your trading game a lot. Number six, control your emotions, man. This is so important. Um... You know, in poker, I used to play a lot of poker, and I still do for fun. But in poker, they call it tilt. And that's when somebody messes up a lot, and then they start playing out of the way. And that's where people who are able to control their emotions take advantage of that in poker. So they see that you're playing poorly because you're angry from a loss, from a, from an all-in or something. And they will take advantage of you and profit off you. So at the end of the day, who's the one that's losing? You're the one that's losing because you can't control your emotions. You know, when it comes to stock trading, I see a lot of people, they, they're shorting stocks and then the stock starts to go up and they're like, oh my God, they get so mad and they continue to short more and more and add more to the short. That's how you go bankrupt. You don't want that. So control your emotions, 
you know, remember, you can't stop a lot of emotions. You will get mad. I get mad all the time, especially when a trade doesn't go in my favor. But I learned to control my emotions over time, and I'm improving on that every single day. Now, I'm not perfect at it. I still have my days where I can't control my emotions, and I can't focus on anything else for the rest of the day, especially after market. But I'm learning to improve on that, and everyone needs to start somewhere. You know, and don't ever mass buy just because you're down. Number seven, learn to take partial profits. The best traders learn to take their profits early. So, for example, if a stock is right now trading at five dollars and it jumps up to five thirty, now you're in profit zone. You've made your money. Uh, you think the stock will continue to go higher, but at the same time, you're worried that all these short sellers will come in and massively drop the price. Especially when you're trading in a crazy industry like biotech. Uh, stocks can drop a dollar, two dollars instantly. I saw this happen with me yesterday, and uh, I keep blaming myself. Hey, how come I didn't sell out earlier? But instead of saying that when it hit its peaks, instead of holding on to my entire position, I could have sold half. Now, if the stock did drop and then I sell the other half at my stop loss, then I would have just broke even, right? Because I already took profit on my first half. So learn to take partial profits. The game is always there. The stock will always be moving. If the stock does drop and you took partial profits, and then it goes back up, then buy back in. You know, don't be afraid to do that. It's all a part of the momentum and intraday trading. It's a strategy. So if it goes high and you think it will continue to break out, but you already have profits, you can sell half. If it continues to break, boom, you profit even more. You know, so learn to take partial profits. Learn to sell partial stocks. And keep moving with the game. You can always buy back in later, especially with the market being so crazy and and, and just so much volume going on. Number eight, learn why a stock is moving. Don't ever trade a stock just because you see momentum for no reason. Those are the stocks I try to avoid the most. I I try to avoid a lot of technical breakouts because I don't know why it's moving. I don't know if it's sustainable. Right, it can drop back down to zero the next day. So don't trade a stock unless there's a good catalyst. So look into to the news. What is making this go up? Maybe this biotech stock had a new conference call. Maybe they they went to some phase two trial clinic or something like that. Or they maybe they got approved by the FDA for the drug product. These are the stuff that will spike the news. Especially if you see these these supernova stocks that jump up like. Two three dollars in one day. The reason why the momentum continues to ride most of the time is because there there are multiple catalysts coming out every single day about the stock. So there's more and more press release, more and more good news that continues to hold this momentum. So trade with the momentum for these stocks and make sure you read all the news about the company, even the past news. It could be like an insider buying, insider selling. Why is this stock good? Why is it bad? Is it a good company or not? Read the SEC filings. Well, that's it. Those are my tips.、Uh, I will have a lot more, but those are the main ones that made me a better trader. So you know, thanks for watching. Again, it's Wilson.、Uh, subscribe to this channel. Give it a thumbs up, and you can always follow me on Twitter at it's Wilson Eight.